Hello, and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. I'm Tracy, also known as Mercy Tiara, and I do scrapbooking process videos and more here on my channel. This layout I made using the Celebrate kit and add-ons from Mercy Tiara Kits. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a pattern design in a piece of pattern paper and make it into a strong feature element on your page. Now, one of the things I'm doing here is I'm just reviewing the newsletter that comes with this kit. The newsletter gives you a chance to write down some ideas that you have about the kit, either different items in the kit that you want to play around with, ideas you might have for it, but also some journaling prompts and ideas, photos that you want to take. And I'm just revisiting some of the things that I had written down here because it's been a while. One of the things that I wanted to do was remember to use these dies. And it's funny as I narrate it because I absolutely completely forgot to use those dies as I created this page, but that's okay. I am going to be using my sketch that I wrote down. It's not so much a sketch as it was just an idea on how to use this pattern paper. I wanted to cut this paper right here, this one from April and Ivy, and I wanted to cut it along the edges of those jaggedy lines and create a fun, bold, and very graphic kind of a pattern to use as part of my background. So I knew I wanted to use that paper, but then I had to decide which other papers I might wanna use. So that's what I'm doing right here, just going through, deciding which ones to use. And I really wanted to pair that very bold piece of paper with a more neutral piece of cardstock, something that didn't have a design on it. So I took a look at the cardstock that came in this kit. We get this beautiful coral paper. We get a, t a turquoise color as well as black and some glitter cardstock as well. But none of those really worked for what I had in mind. So I actually went back from a couple of kits ago. We had this piece of cardstock that was called Walnut Cream. And I can't remember if it was in the... It definitely wasn't in the Joy kit. So it might have been in the Gather kit. It wasn't too long ago anyhow, but I did still have a piece of it on hand. So I'm just cutting off the designer strip on it there. And my trimmer doesn't work right when you use the arm. There's always a problem with every trimmer. I've yet to find a trimmer that doesn't have some type of a problem with it, one problem or another. And for me, this arm doesn't open up quite as long as it needs to. It doesn't open as wide as it needs to. So I had to just measure and cut in a different way than you might have been expecting. And that's just because of a problem with the trimmer. So now, as you can see, I'm just taking this pattern and I'm following some of the lines that are on the page. And basically I'm cutting all the way across and I just wanted to have an interesting zigzaggy kind of a look with it gradually getting closer and closer to the bottom, like to the edge, meaning less and less of this pattern showing as I go along. So down here, there will be less, although this little jag here kind of comes out and is longer. But for the most part, I wanted it to be trending towards less as I got closer to the bottom. So this is the piece that I have here. And I really love it. And what I noticed is that the other piece is also quite nice. I might use that one as well. But for today, I'm going to focus on this one. And I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit. So I did cut that part out. I just kind of went back with my scissors and cut off any areas that were exposed. And I'm just showing my Patreon viewers because I was doing this in a real time process video for them that it would be really cool to use both of these pieces on a double page layout. If you had the same color, if I had two of that walnut cream background, I might have been even more tempted to do a double page, although I would have had to have chosen a different photo and different subject because I don't, I don't have enough stories or pictures to spread across a double page for this one. But I thought that that would be a good idea. So that's why I just showed that there. I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this. I felt like that whole pattern was just taking up too much of my background. So I decided to cut it down a little bit. And I really like the proportions here. 
And so I think it's going to look something like this. And I don't know if I'm going to tuck my photo in behind some of those jaggedy edges, or if I'm going to float my photo down in the center of the cardstock background. I haven't quite decided yet, but I am aware that I could do either of these things. I just stood up so that I could really focus on centering, not centering, but aligning that piece of paper with my cardstock background. And now I'm going to trim this off. Now, another option here would have been to not trim off part of it. So now my paper is no longer 12 by 12. And my thought here is that I'm just going to patch in this piece of patterned paper uh, behind my walnut cream cardstock so that it, it's sticking out. So I have to align the top of my layout there with the 12 inch mark and then the bottom with the zero line on my grid mat. And that allows me to pull up the edge of that walnut cream and have some really interesting cool layering happening there. I could have also just left the paper 12 by 12, like the cardstock 12 by 12 and just cut a strip of that patterned paper and layered it on top of the walnut cream cardstock and then used my fingernails or, or a distressing tool to rough up the edges of the pattern paper instead of roughing up the edges of the cardstock. Either one of those looks would be fine and one of them would be easier than the one that I did. <laughs> so as you saw, as I explained that, I was just taking my fingers and running my fingernails along the edges of these strips of paper. And I was doing this very much inspired by Sarah Wiles, who has a YouTube channel. She's on our design team for the Mercy TR kits. And she does this a lot. And typically I do a lot of distressing, but I usually use a tool, either my scissors or a little distress tool. But I decided to use my fingers. It's, this, it's an especially good easy strategy to use when you've already glued something down because you can always just stick your fingernail under the paper and and pull it up a little bit. So one of the things I want to do here is do some journaling along the outline that this really interesting shape takes on my photo. Not on my photo, the interesting shape that this uh, paper puts on my background. And so I'm going to design with that idea in mind. You saw me experiment with different orientations. I think that this page would look cool on any of the four different options of orientations that you would have here with the jaggedy lines on the top like I'm doing or on either side or even on the bottom. But I'm going to do them on the top. I am going to mat my photo on this piece of scrap paper. This is from the kit. It's from April and Ivy, I believe. Yes, it is from April and Ivy. And I have already torn off a strip of it. So I'm just using the rest of it to mat that photo with a, just a very subtle, very thin matting. And then I've decided to do the same matting here. Now there is a torn edge. So I just made it so that the torn edge was on the bottom for both of them. I could have cleaned up that torn edge if I wanted to, but I, I didn't really feel the need to do that. I'm going to pop up this small photo. This small photo is actually the main photo, but the people in the photo were moving when I took the photo. And so it's very, very blurry and it looks much better small than it does large. So that's why I printed it. It's printed at two by three, which is very, very small. The other photo is printed at four by six. But at least this way, I get a picture of Jen and Adam in this page because it is mostly about them. So these floral die cuts came in the add-on for the Celebrate kit. They're from Simple Stories, and they just work so beautifully with this April and Ivy collection. And so uh, what I've decided to do was have most of my embellishments on this page be floral. And I did that for a reason because the organic feel that comes with these flowers, it's a really nice contrast to those harsh lines that are in the pattern paper that I'm emphasizing so much by cutting out the shapes of it. And so what this does is it gives my page a little bit more balance 
and makes it look a little bit softer than it would look if I only had those angles. And then of course the angles of the photos themselves, it would be a lot of angles. So the florals really do a great job of softening up this overall page. I am going to use this chipboard piece. It's also from Simple Stories from the chipboard collection that came, or this chipboard sheet that came in the add-on, in the embellishment add-on. And I popped it up on some thin foam tape and that's going to layer alongside the floral piece that's up there in the corner. And I really like that floral piece and the and the camera there. Because they have a white outline around them, they don't blend in as much to the background. And I really like how they look. Now, these foam thickers are from the Life of the Party collection from American Crafts. And I really love this one that says Booyah. So I decided to put that one right there. And it takes up some of the space on that photo. That, that photo is sort of, it's strange that there's that the large photo on this layout is just of beer and a cider as well. So I, I think that it's it's always fine to overlap your, your embellishments with your photo, but I think in this case, it's especially okay to do that. Now, as I was making this, I noticed that there was an embellishment that has best wishes on it. And I had an idea for a layout I wanna make with that. So I just wrote it in my newsletter. And that is another great reason to keep that newsletter on hand. If you do subscribe to the kits, you get the newsletter for free. It has lots of design ideas and the worksheets inside of it are really, really handy. I've decided to just call this cheers. And so I spelled it out with the gold glitter thickers that come in the main kit. And I just, I just lined it up on my thicker alignment tool, which is basically just a very thin, flexible ruler. And I've just put it aside for now, now that I know what the title is and I can see how it's going to fit. I just need to now execute some of my ideas that I had. So I'm starting by layering some of these things together. So I put the booyah on there and the flower behind it just to anchor it and now I have a flower here but it just doesn't it wasn't quite big enough it was leaving too much white space in be behind it so I think what I'm going to do is replace that one curvy floral piece with two other floral pieces these two so that's where my my word is going to go and I just want to align everything so that there's room for the word cheers there so I am using those foam adhesive pieces. They Once I take the backings off of them, then I can just adhere those flowers to the back of my little cluster that I have here. And now I'm putting some adhesive on two of those little clusters of flowers, and that will help me stick my design strip. This is the design strip from the pattern paper that I'm using. So I'm using every bit of this paper. Obviously, I do have a big scrap of that jaggedy edge, but I guarantee you I'm going to use that on another page. So now I just want to position this so that there's going to be room for the word cheers, but also so that there's enough space above that I can do journaling along the edges of all of those cool angles. So I'll place my title right here. It says cheers. And that's super easy to do with the, with the thicker alignment tool or any thin Thin ruler and then I'm just I had put some powder on that foam piece so it wouldn't stick permanently on the photo just in case I decided to change my mind so now it was time to glue that down so I just added some adhesive and removed some of the backing and now I'm just going to be placing things so I decided that the top edge needed a little bit of softening so I added another little floral piece there now I have florals on three different sides of this cluster of photos and the title, and it all looks very tight and pretty. I'm just pulling up some of the edges on the floral pieces so that they have a little bit more dimension to them. And then I adhere that flower, that floral piece in place and layered the camera on top of it. And then I decided I had just a tiny little bit of this design strip. It's a green grid paper. I really love it. It's actually more like a ledger paper. And so I wanted to put that last little piece under the camera because it's just so cute. I wanted to use it all up. Now, when I first 
thought about doing this, I thought I'd be using all kinds of different stickers and die cut pieces and stuff in my, in my embellishments, but in my embellishment clusters, but I ended up deciding to just go with the florals. I really, really like how they look, but I want to add a little something to behind the florals just to anchor them a little bit more and give a tiny bit more detail to this page. So it's not just all flowers. So I was looking for some tabs. I knew there were some tabs in the die cuts. These are the April and Ivy die cuts. They came in the main kit. And so there are these three foldable tabs that you could fold them to make them to use them like a regular office tab, but you could also cut them apart and then you'll have twice as many of them. I'm deciding to actually keep it intact because I really like how that looks. Like it's a very, very subtle detail, but you can tell that it is a real tab and that it has been layered the way that a normal office tab would have been. And I just really like that look. I'm quickly grabbing my typewriter, which I keep closer to me now. So it's a little bit easier to use it. And I don't know exactly how my typing is going to go. It's a good thing that there are two sides to this tab because I ended up typing off track way over to the side. So I'm going to try it again, a little bit more centered here. And this one turns out quite a bit better. I will put the lid back on my typewriter and put it away. And now I have a tab here that says Off Track, which is the name of the brewery that we go for our movie night meetings. I'm going to outline this before I place it. And I'm just using my mustard yellow. It is a zebra, what is it called? It is a Sarasa clip pen. I have that pen in many different colors and I really love using it for outlining and journaling and whatnot. I was going to add a staple to this just to give it a bit of an office-y feel and then I remembered in the joy kit there were these beautiful paper clips that I didn't use. I used one of them on a recent layout that wasn't using the joy kit so I've been kind of pulling out those paper clips and I thought that this was a really great opportunity to use it. It's beautiful rose gold with a cute little heart in it. It's just adorable and it's the perfect little touch. I'm looking at it right now and it looks amazing. Now this is what I'm thinking about doing but I don't want anything to be quite as overpowering as that big blue piece but these two fishtail tabs or labels or whatever they are they look really great and they add a lot to this page. So I'm going to outline those also with the, with the mustard yellow pen. And I'm just going to stick them in. I'm gonna stick this one just a little bit behind and above that flower cluster. And then I'm going to place this one just a little bit towards the bottom and also behind this flower cluster. And that just adds a little something different so it's not all florals on these clusters here. So we have flowers and a label in each of those two clusters. And so I felt like I really needed a label over here, but nothing that I had pre-pulled really worked. So I'm going to take a second look through these embellishments and I'm not going to find anything that really works there. Everything was either too big or too dark or introducing another color or using too much of that super, super bright gold. There's gold foil elements on this and I really love it, but I didn't want it, something super golden up there. So I'm actually marking off some of the die cuts that I've used so that I don't go looking for something that isn't in this little sandwich bag. And then I'm going to place everything back in the sandwich bag because I'm done with that because I noticed that on this cut apart sheet, there actually is a little label that is, if I cut it down, it's going to be the right scale for what I wanted. It's going to basically mimic the two that I already have. And I thought about placing one on each side of this embellishment. And that does look pretty good. It actually does look good. But I ultimately decided to just add one on the side right here. So now I feel like all three of my floral and my main three floral embellishment clusters look really great. And then I have this secondary cluster up here and it has that green ledger paper on it. So I'm just going to add the date. It was January 6th, which was yesterday and 2024. It's I think it's my first page from 2024. 
Now, all that's left to do on this one is the journaling. And the journaling was a little tricky because I did want to go around all of those different angles. This is one of my favorite things to do. I've been doing this for years and years, ever since I started scrapbooking. I've just always really loved journaling around interesting shapes. So my journaling here says, in light of the Celebrate kit, I'm thinking more and more about celebrations as not just the big events or get togethers, but also as including some of our everyday events. It's so much more meaningful to celebrate these moments as they, are, as they better reflect our everyday values. Cheers to Jen and Adam and engaging conversations about film over beers. Now, I'm just going to finish off that journaling, and then I will show you some close-ups, both some video footage as well as some photos that I took. I really love how this one turned out. But before I share those photos, just a quick shout-out to my Patreon supporters. These folks who you'll see on the screen shortly, they help make this channel happen. So a big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos, as well as real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly live stream, behind the scenes videos of my room and my process. So big thanks to them. Here is the finished product. Look at that. The journaling pen that I used is a Muji gel pen in a navy blue color. And I really love how those embellishment clusters look. And I think that adding those little fishtail flag banners looked, or labels or whatever you want to call those, those just added a little something more interesting than just having flowers in them. And that little cluster up at the top with the camera is just adorable and a great place to put the, the date. So here are those patron supporters. These folks are all rock stars in my eyes. I totally adore them because their support helps make this channel happen. And I absolutely love making these videos. It's a lot of fun for me. So thanks to them. And also thanks to you for watching my videos, especially those of you who subscribe and watch and comment and share. It all really does help my channel do well so that I can keep on doing what I love, what I love to do. This is a hobby for me. It's not the way that I make my main money or really any money, but uh, I do really, really enjoy it. And I've been doing it for a really long time. So thanks so much for making that happen for me. It's viewers like you who do that. So thanks. Here are some of the places that you can find me on the internet. Of course, we have our kit club that you can purchase kits like the Celebrate kit that I was using today or any others as well. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this really cool jaggedy paper design because I'm really loving it. And tell me, should I use the off cut for another similar layout or would that be too many things the same in my album? Let me know what you think. Have a great scrappy week.